In my everyday practice, I always wish that there would be no late diagnosis of glaucoma, that all patients would be coming in a timely diagnostic procedure, that I would search for glaucoma better than evaluate late stage glaucoma when the patient is coming with the severe damage, not knowing that he had glaucoma for a couple of years. So this is my main wish for the future, because Unless I'm, I'm every year when I'm seeing patients that come with the late stage disease, it's really very sorry that he missed the proper time for diagnosis. While assessing glaucoma progression, it's not only function that we are assessing because glaucoma is the disease of structure and function. So when we diagnose glaucomatous optic neuropathy and we see, evaluate what's happening over the years, we also evaluate the full field of different risk factors, family anamnesis, different changes in the front surface, in the back of the eye. How do we see the another, other risk factors that might be also influence the course of the disease and progression? So when we evaluate, of course, we do a visual field and we do tomography of the optic nerve and nerve fiber layers and macular region. But these examinations are in conjunction with other clinical evaluations that put the full picture of glaucoma. like artificial intelligence and different algorithms, they are coming into fashion because more and more we try to rely on the technology and on the diagnosis that machine gives us. But up to date, there's not a single technology that would be supposedly diagnosing glaucoma properly. We still need clinical thinking. Like artificial intelligence, of course, is helpful. All the algorithms that are made to help the practitioner to decide, but still at the end of the day, it's the practitioner who decides whether it's glaucoma, whether it's progressing, and how to change the management of the progressing case. In glaucoma, we cannot take one single criteria. We can have one major factor, several minor factors, but still in glaucoma, we need to see the full picture of the patient. So if we diagnose glaucoma as glaucomatous optic neuropathy with progressing optic disc and visual field changes, so we need to have them both see what's happening in the optic disc, in the retina, in the retinal nerve fiber layer, in ganglion cells, and also to see if these structural changes are matching the functional changes. Are they going together? Or primary we see structural changes, not seeing functional changes. Or functional changes already appeared, but the structural changes are coming after them. So when evaluating glaucoma patient, we are treating the only risk factor that we know up to date. It's intraocular pressure. But we evaluate the course of the disease according to structural and functional changes. Plus, we need to add all the spectrum of different risk factors that add to the course of the disease. So glaucoma management is not like taking one criteria. Intraocular pressure is the most known risk factor for, for glaucoma, but it is not in the definition. So the definition of glaucoma is going together with structure and function. Young ophthalmologists, usually they are very fond of different technologies that we can use in ophthalmology. Of course, it's really fascinating when you have computers, iPads, iPhone programs, when you can put everything that calculates the risk of progression, that calculates the possibility of the disease, that you can get some kind of printout, that you can show the patient how everything looks like. But the fact is that we need to know what we are really measuring and to evaluate all the examinations properly. It's not enough to see the quick answer that glaucoma hemifield outside normal limits. You have to analyze it and to know where are the changes occurring. The same with the OCT. We have different technologies 
changing every year. We have some new programs, some new sophisticated machines coming in. But at the end of the day, the clinician needs to know what he analyzing in the fact. What are the changes we are seeing? Whether these uh, examinations are reliable? Maybe we made a mistake while examining the patient and now we are evaluating something else. Like, for example, if the patient was blinking during examination, you will not have the inner fiber layer, you have the, the blinking of the eyelids and you will be measuring the eyelashes, not the inner fiber layer. It's maybe a joke, but still, you need to know exactly whether the examination were done properly. It's not only to have the fancy machine and to use it. You need to know what you are doing exactly.